What is up everyone and welcome to another Bitcoin market update. In these videos, you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others and everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. All right, let's dive into it here with Bitcoin on the monthly time frame, folks. We are looking very good here in terms of continuation by the bulls after we've set our higher low here. In the month of June, we have risen about, uh, well, let's check, grab our measurement tool here, snap it to the bottom, about 73% uh, since that low, very good rise in price. So this rise in price is then telling us that if we do end up setting a lower high below this previous high here at 65K, we will come down and likely form a higher low above the previous low from June here. And the reason for that is because of the magnitude of this move. We've risen about 75%. So for us to go down and go to a new lower low in one full swoop, we would need to decline about 42%, which is possible. Uh, clearly, given that we've bounced 73%, it, we could draw down 40-some percent and go to a new lower low. But it's more likely the higher we rise that we will set a higher low. So it's good to see um, some good continuation there by the bulls. We're getting very close to this uh, being... Um, increasing bull volume. We have nine days remaining. It likely will end up being um, above average. I'm sorry. Yeah, above average increasing bull volume on this candle close. And the reason for that is because of the fact that this previous candle was at 79.1 billion on this exchange in terms of bull volume. And this we're already at 75.6 roughly. So not very far to go. So that's good news for the bulls. Uh, good continuation here. The weekly candle close is in about 20 minutes, and uh, we're going to have some increasing bull volume here. Very good to see for continuation there. Um, and we're you know just continuing this crazy rise that we've had off the bottom that we set on July 19th. So when we're trying to read price action to determine when is there going to be a buying opportunity, if you're not just buying on the way up, you're waiting for a drawdown on the weekly time frame to get in on a higher low being set, right? Well, you need a high to be set first before we come down and form that higher low. So where is that going to be set? Well, we need to look at things like volume, RSI, and the candle close and the candle bodies and the wicks to decide when is that high going to potentially be set. Um, it doesn't look like it's being set this week just because of the fact that we're having this increasing bull volume. The candle close is looking like it's going to be uh, with a very short upper wick. Um, so good for continuation there by the bulls. And next week might be the week that we form a uh, somewhat of a high uh, on the weekly time frame. And then come down and form our higher low because it's very unlikely because of the magnitude of the move that we're going to draw down all the way from you know here all the way down to a previous lower low of about 41% in one go. It's more likely we'll form a higher low somewhere and then probably you know potentially even continue the trend. If we look at like the Super Guppy, Super Guppy is still in good position here. This is a collection of EMAs and you can see that it's in the most bullish uh, position it can be in. With the uh, longer term EMAs, the green ones, operating below the faster uh, light blue ones here. And you can see that price kind of consolidated inside of those investor EMAs, kind of got some accumulation going on there. And then we see this rise in price bouncing off of those. So those are still in good position for continuation, but I am anticipating a high being set here on the weekly time frame sometime over the next couple weeks. So we'll see when that's going to occur. Let's go down to the three-day time frame. Uh, so this candle closes in 19 minutes as well. And right now it's looking very good in terms of a higher low being set. And now we're pushing above for a higher high. The question is going to be, can we close the next three-day candle above this key high as well here from August 14th after we likely will close this one? If we do, then we'll have a nice good continuation of the three-day bull trend here. And this black candle will turn into a support zone for price. So that's good. Uh, we're still running into this gray resistance zone from the three-day time frame back when we had our bull trend right here. So we had a low, high, higher, low, higher, high. We came back into this zone right here. Boom, bounce off. Boom, bounce off. Very simple. We close below it. Now what, what is going to happen? It's going to turn into resistance on the first test. That is what we get right here. We come into it. We reject off of it. And now we're coming into it. Uh, again here with a bounce. 
So the question is, are we gonna be able to go through this and close two candlesticks above it? If we do, on the three-day time frame, this gray zone will likely turn into a support zone again for price, uh, which will likely propel us higher. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. If we go to the single day time frame, we can see that rejection that I talked about did end up playing out here on this resistance level, this red resistance level right here, back from May 14th. And this is from our bear trend. So like I, like I always say on this channel, whenever we're looking for a support or resistance level, we're first looking for an established bull or bear trend to decide where that support or resistance zone is going to be. Right here, we have a bear trend confirmed with four different components that we need. We need a high, a low, which is what we get right here, a lower high in comparison to the previous high, signaling weakening uh, bull momentum, and then a lower low to confirm the momentum is in the bear's favor. And so this last up candle, this last candle right here, where people were buying their Bitcoin before the drawdown, is an opportunity when we come back and return to this level for them to sell their Bitcoin. And that's what we saw here. We saw a, a rejection off of this, but it's looking like bulls bought the dip pretty aggressively. And I'll talk about a, a trade that I personally took um, in just a moment here uh, on this drawdown. And if we look at this, um, you know, you can see that if we close this candle back inside of the red zone, I, I'm anticipating pretty good continuation over the next couple of days, um, just because you know, this is a very brief drawdown. I mean, we barely wicked below the previous daily low to make this an actual test of this resistance zone. And then we're coming right back into it with force. So that's good for continuation in my opinion. Um, and so we'll see if we can close two one day candlesticks above that red zone, that will end up turning into, into a resistance zone. So that's very good for us. And that's what we're gonna be looking for if we are a bull. Uh, the super guppy continues to climb here on this single day time frame. We have not tested the green EMAs yet. And if you like riding a trend, this is one way that you can, you can use this indicator to ride trends very easily. And it's just a collection of EMAs. So the longer term EMAs here are very easy to use as a guide to where to potentially buy. Obviously, like I said, nothing is financial advice in this channel. But the way that I like to play this and use this indicator is bid in the green EMA zone um, on a bull trend like this that's established, and then just add to the position on an increase uh, over time as we go. So you can see here, here's a perfect example of how this indicator works. So you can see like the green EMAs, they get expanded here. First time we really test them is right here. We come into them, here's a buying opportunity. We get a nice bounce. We come back into them here. Here you can add to your position. We, we continue the trend. And you can just keep adding to your position if you'd like uh, and take profits wherever you'd like on the trend um, whenever you get back into those EMAs. So here's another uh, buying opportunity, three of them right there. We keep it going and it keeps doing that until eventually the EMAs, the green ones start to get more condensed here and then we draw down through them. Now, once they turn gray is when you're gonna close out your trade. So that is when uh, you know a lot of people close out their trades. We get a little, uh, little relief rally and then we get the real drawdown here that flip these to be red. It works the same way on the short side. Here's an entry here, boom, you're, you're entered in, you make like 20 plus percent. Here's another add to your position move, add to your position, you know, and you just ride that baby down. And then once they flip to be gray right here, you know, you, uh, you close out your position as soon as these turn gray. And then you can see that they slowly uh, roll over in this gray area to being green. So now the momentum is in the bull's favor on this indicator and the green EMAs have not been tested yet. So that's where I'm personally looking to buy some Bitcoin is on those. Another thing I'm watching is the Ichimoku cloud. This, like I said several days ago, is gonna take quite some time for this to flip to be bullish. We need this to flip to be green. We need the cloud to flip to be green. And we need the Tenkin, the blue line, and the Kiju and the red line to cross above the cloud. So hopefully that'll happen uh, over the next months. <laughs> so if we go down to the 12 hour time frame, we can see the trade that I just took, uh, which is panning out um, very nicely. So it's really this gray level right here. It's a very simple trade. So we have a bear trend here. We have a high, low, lower high, lower low. Two candle closes below the key low right here. Um, and so if we look at this, we can see that uh, this zone, the last up candle before that down move, 
is our resistance zone. But we didn't even come into it here. We came up, but then we rejected now. We didn't even get to the gray level. So then when we come into it here, it looks like we might reject, but we push right through it and close above. So now when we come back into this valid level, this, this should have been a valid resistance level right here, but we pushed above it. Now it's a valid support level. So now you can see the accuracy of this level. When we come into it right here, the price bounces significantly off of that level, um, almost instantaneously. So, I mean, the wick, you can see, we got down to 48,091, and the high of this level is 48,105. So we only went like 15 points into this level. Um, so it really just barely grazed it, but you can see that since that point, if we grab our measurement tool, we can see we've already gotten a bounce of over 3% here on spot over the last 12 hours. And that to get that re reaction in the same candle that touches it in this long lower wick, this could potentially see some, some pretty good uh, continuation for price. So this is really the main support zone that I'm keeping an eye on right now is this 12 hour time frame um, and how it uh, reacts to this. If we end up going below this at some point and closing two candles below it, it'll be resistance for price. But right now, it seems likely that uh, with the weekly candle close, being the way that it is, we could see this climb a bit higher uh, over the next week and then see how the daily candle closes relate to this resistance level right here, this red resistance level. So keep an eye on those levels and keep doing your research to learn technical analysis. If you'd like to learn technical analysis through a very simple um, beginner focused course, you can head to lutheria.com using the link in the description below and you can check out our beginner technical analysis course that we released that'll teach you all of the basic elements that you need to get started trading these crypto assets with precision like this right here. So the way that you can do that is by using things like candlestick analysis, support and resistance, volume analysis, technical indicators, and various other things. And that's what we'll teach you the foundational elements of in this course. You can check out that using the link in the description below, like I said. Um, and then until tomorrow, we are going to keep it going onward and upward.